Good to be with you today. Let's open up our Bibles to John chapter 12. We're going to start in verse 4, uh, where the Bible says this, But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? Then he said, not that he, uh, this he said, excuse me, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box and he used to take what was put in it. But Jesus said, let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. For the poor you have with you always, but me you do not have always. Uh, you know, yesterday we were talking about taking a step of faith and really worshiping Jesus to the extent that he deserves because he's worthy of it all. He's worthy of it all. And, um, you know, I said to you that, that the Spirit of God was going to speak to us uniquely, that there were steps that he would guide us in individually uh, to worship Jesus in a way that he deserves to be worshipped. You know, maybe some of you thought, wow, is that even possible? Like, is the Spirit of God really that engaged with us on a daily basis where he would lead us and guide us and speak to us about how we can worship Christ on a daily basis? And the answer is yes. The answer is yes if we're willing to develop that relationship, that depth of relationship with the Spirit of God, if we're that willing to listen, if we're that willing to ask, if we're that open to being led and directed by God's Spirit. You know what the Spirit of God will do when you begin your day like that and ask Him to show you how you can express worship to Christ um, to the extent that He deserves. When you do take that step and when you invite the Spirit of God to speak to you in that way, he will be faithful to do, to do that because the purpose of the Spirit is to glorify Christ and the purpose of Christ is to glorify the Father. That's how it works. And your purpose in life is to glorify the Godhead. So, so every, I'm saying to you every day, this is the desire intent that God has for you that your life would be an expression of worship. Now, let me just say this. When you do live your life like that, you're going to get criticized. You're going to get pushback. You're going to get people that have an opinion about the way that you worship God, just like Mary did. I mean, think about this. Here, Mary's in this room, and there's a, just a beautiful expression of all that Christ has done in these lives. And as she brings everything that she has, her, the fullness of her financial possession, and she pours it over the head and the feet of Christ in an expression of worship. Like, from, I think from our mindset, we think, well, everyone's going to be on board with that. Like, that, what a beautiful thing. But that was not the case. There was one individual uh, who oversaw the money box and saw a financial opportunity that he could have exploited, lost. There was one that accused her and, and criticized her expression of worship. And it's interesting, as you read the story, the single expression of criticism took root. It took hold in the lives of the other disciples. And so it created this attitude, you know, kind of comprehensively uh, of the disciples towards Mary in this, in this moment that, that should have just been beautiful, where they should have come alongside of her and affirmed her worship of Christ and you know, this is what Jesus does. He turns to his disciples and he defends her. You know, stop saying what you're saying. Stop criticizing other people's expression of worship. She has done what she could do. And in fact, this one single step would become a testimony memorialized in the word of God in every gospel account. So, so listen, this is tied to yesterday's devotional, all right? You take steps of faith. You worship him as he is led and directed you to worship him. Prepare yourself because, because there will be people that will criticize the way that you worship the Lord. And when that criticism comes, know where it comes from and guard yourself against it and continue to lean into your worship of God in the way that he deserves, no matter, no matter how people may criticize you. But then in addition to that, guard your heart from being the one who criticizes the worship of other people. You know, I think a lot of times it's easy for us to sit in the seat of judgment and to say uh, what we think or how we think people 
should worship God. Now, don't get me wrong. For sure, our worship of God should be in alignment with the scriptures. And if, you know, our expression of worship isn't in alignment with the word of God, then there's a problem, definitely. Um, But at the same time, we don't want to put ourselves in a position where we're criticizing something that's pleasing to God, not a good place to be. Hey, let's worship him in the way that he deserves. Let's encourage other people as they worship him. And let's choose to be a congregation, a body of believers that lives in full worship of Jesus Christ to the extent that he deserves. Father, thank you, God, for this uh, example of Mary. And I pray today, Lord, that no matter what criticism comes our way, you would help us to to reverence you and to respect you, to adore you and to praise you in the way that you deserve. And Father, I pray that you would help us to have the right attitude towards others. We do confess that God, sometimes it's easy to be critical of other people. Uh, And you know, there's so much that we need to be responsible for in our own lives. Uh, God, we probably should start there. And so Lord, help us to do that. Help us, Father, to please you today in the way that we live and the attitudes that we have. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day.